Okay, so this is the video on an Altoids survival kit or E and E kit. So it's a good, kind of a good transition from the E and E kits that we were talking about before and some of the other videos to getting into some more survival kits. Now um, I'll post another video uh, on a, an, a, a kind of a practical vehicle survival kit, um, but in short. Um, I don't really believe in relying on survival kits. I think that's kind of a false sense of hope. But um, anyway, so let's get jump into this. Um, so these this type of survival kit was designed and used by the uh, SAS uh, Lofty Weissman, who is now a um, who is a, f a famous author who wrote the S SAS Survival Manual. Um, he had in instructed his um, guys to build a, a survival kit out of a plaster's tin or band-aids tin that you could put in your pocket so that if you were to lose your backpack uh, your rucksack uh, your second uh, line gear your your webbing gear and have nothing uh, but what was in your pockets um, you would have enough material inside the pockets to be able to uh, escape and evade or whatever from um, you know enemy com enemy combatants or whatever so, um, so basically, that had evolved then to the Altide survival tin because obviously we you don't you know, band aids aren't made in tins anymore, um, and these are Altoid cans are are found everywhere. The nice thing about these Altoid cans is their pocket size, which forces you to just put the stuff that's necessary inside here um, that you can keep in your pocket. Um, but then also uh, the tin itself can be used to make char cloth, which is super handy to have. Um, and then it's, since it's tin, you can use it as a reflective material, um, as a signal mirror if you needed to. So that's pretty handy. Um, so a little handy thing. So the kit that I have on here is, um, has right on the front is one of these cards that you get from SE Knives from Randall's Adventure. Super awesome little card, uh, gives you some, uh, signaling, gives you some kind of survival tips. Uh, really nicely, it has this little little measuring tool here which you can use to create a UTM scale if you need to or for map reading but uh, so if you need to find your exact longitude and latitude or UTM coordinates you can do that right here and just nice to have these little tips so I threw that in there um, homemade arrowhead this is probably a little overkill but I got rid of the striker uh, for my ferro rod so this arrowhead actually works as a good field knife um, not necessarily, I'm not going to make a spear out of this necessarily, but I could. Um, but I could use this as a field knife. I could use this for scraping, uh, um, for making tinder. I could use this for um, all sorts of different things. Um, so it's just a spoon, an old uh, tablespoon flattened down um, and, uh, and sharpened. And so it actually is quite sharp and does work well as a knife. So, um, all right, survival whistle. Here's really important. Uh, you'll see a lot of times in survival situations, people have really big, really super, super loud whistles, um, you know, and, um, you know, or, or, you know, different types of whistles. What you want to make sure is you have a whistle that actually is functional, um, both that it's ex extremely loud, as loud as you can, you can get, but also have to keep in mind your lung capacity. So if you are cold, for example, um, or you fell into the water, um, it's very hard to get enough air to breathe, to blow that whistle. So you want to make sure you have one that's actually capable of, 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 you, you, of you being able to use it in distress, basically. So um, these SOL whistles are actually fantastic because they're slim line and they fit in the kit really well. But the Fox whistles in particular are some of the better. All right, so uh, I think I... <laughs> uh, all right, so... Um, a condom here for uh, all sorts of stuff, but primarily for using it as a canteen. Uh, duct tape, great for uh, repairing, also for uh, maybe first aid, um, all sorts of different things you could do with duct tape. Uh, lifeboat matches, these are probably some of the best matches for emergency because they burn hot and long for a long time. Um, all right, and then I have, going along with repair and other stuff, I've got dental floss, super handy for lots and lots of different things, repair. Uh, fishing, um, and, and many, many different applications. Um, and then with that, I also have, it fell in here, is a needle. Uh, so you can use this for blister care, for, you know, first aid splinters, um, repairing your gear, whatever. Um, and then, as you see, I have got a little a basic fishing kit. Um, so, you know, there's water everywhere, um, and where there's water, there's chances are there's fish. 
So I've got an array of, of, of lures and hooks, um, different sizes, so you can catch smaller, even smaller minnows and use those minnows then to catch crayfish or bigger fish um, and so on and so forth. Um, and then some wire, again, gear repair, um, but also um, you could use it to snare because if you're going to build traps, um, you know, fishing and snares are probably going to be the two different um, food gathering techniques that is going to be probably the most successful. The thing is, you, you have to be around water where there is fish, and you have to be in a place where you have enough traps out to actually catch food. One or two traps may not be enough. So, um, but at least it gets you started, and then you can build the rest of your traps um, with your with your knife if you needed to or whatever. Um, and then lastly, here is a little tiny razor blade. Again, first aid, repairs, um, and, and food, uh, food prep. So, um, that is the kit. Uh, this is kind of, as I said, kind of goes in from the, the, the whole, um, escape and evasion, um, you know, context and kind of going into kind of more of the survival kit realm. So, uh, the, the, uh, uh this is, uh, yeah, this is it.